All right, y'all. So today we started unit two and um, we started talking there about slope in general. And a lot of y'all came into my math class knowing a very little bit about slope, uh, just a couple of different things. And that's what we're going to talk about today. All right. So first of all, I wanted to mention rate of change and slope are interchangeable. Okay. Um, if whether the problem says rate of change or slope, you're going to do this the same way. All right. Um, more so we do word problems with rate of change. So you won't see a whole lot of that today. We're just really dealing with just slope. Um, but I do need to throw that vocab in there on the safe side. Okay. All right. So the rate of change or slope is a ratio that shows how one variable changes with respect to another. Okay. And on a linear graph, that is what we call the slope of a line. All right. Slope is written as a ratio of the vertical change, which y'all know as the rise, over the horizontal change, which y'all know as the run, okay? This is a constant value along the line, and it is written as a fraction. So our slope today will always be a fraction, and we always want to put that in simplest form, okay? And then for us, the variable that we use for slope is m. So a lot of y'all know about slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. The m is your slope, so that's what we're talking about today. All right, so there are four different types of slopes. Okay, the first one that we have is going to be a line that increases from left to right, and this has a positive slope. Okay, we have a line that decreases from left to right, and this has a negative slope. All right, we have a line that goes straight across from left to right. And this one has a zero slope. And I'll show you something here in a minute about that one. And then the last one that we have is a line that goes straight up and down. And this has no slope or sometimes you see the word undefined. Okay, either one. All right, so real quick, one thing about these two right here. I always say that a horizontal line is like starting the letter Z for zero. And a vertical line is like starting the letter N for no. Okay, so zero and no slope on those two. All right, so the whole first section, and I told you I would do every single one of these problems in class, okay, um, on your video, but the whole first section is just counting. All we're counting is we're counting rise over run. All right, so you're going to see here, and I'll try to point these out, these points that are on each graph. And all we're simply going to do is count from the leftmost point to the rightmost point. So I'm going to go up first and kind of make a triangle and then over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I went up seven, and then I'm going to run one, two, three, four. So that makes my rise seven and my run four, and that is my slope. Okay, so for number two, here's my two points. So instead of rising this time, I'm going to have to fall. That just makes this a negative. And you're literally counting. You only count when you move your pen. So one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have a rise of negative three and a run of nine. And then we do need to make, th make these in simplest form. So that's going to reduce down to negative one third. So, y'all, I'm going to kind of fly through these because they literally are just counting. Okay. So, here are my two ordered pairs right here and here. So, I'm going to go, I don't have to go up or down any. So, that's a rise of zero and a run of four. But zero divided by anything is just zero slope. Again, this started a horizontal line. All right. And now this one, number four. We're going to go up one, two, three, four, five, but then we don't have to go left or right any. So again, with the zero on the bottom, that is no slope. Okay. All 
All right, moving along. So literally tons of these, okay? Tons of these. So that's why I said I'm going to go kind of quick. We're just counting. All right, so I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. So that gives me five over three. Down three is a negative three, and over one is negative three over one. Up four and over two. Okay, so that's four over two, which we're going to reduce to two over one. Negative four over four, which is negative one over one. Make sure you do the reduced fraction. Down three, that's negative three. Over 4 is negative 3 fourths. Down 5 over 1 is negative 5 over 1. Okay. All right, this is again a horizontal line, so that is no slope or undefined. Either one, okay? Up two over three is two thirds. Up one over four is one fourth. Down two over four is negative two over four, which is gonna be negative one half. Up to over six, so that's two over six, which is going to be one third. And then the last one we have here is a horizontal line of zero. Okay, so that is just graphing on a graph, so we're just counting. That's the first half of your homework. Okay, so now let's go to the next part which is our slope formula. And we have already done slope formula. We introduced this in our warm-ups. Okay, so remember, our slope formula is M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And that's literally what we're going to do for all, I think there's 12 of these. And again, I'm going to go relatively quickly because we have done this before. If you need to label your points, label your points. The first one is your X1, Y1, X2, Y2, okay? If you need to label every single one of them, go through and label every single one of them. X1, Y1, X2, Y2. Every single one of them if you need to, okay? I don't need to do that for everyone because eventually we should know what we're doing, okay? But you can label every single one and then you're just plugging into your formula, all right? So let's start with the first one. Y2 is three minus y1 is 1 over 4 minus 1. So that's 2 over 3, and that doesn't get any simpler. y2 is negative 2. Minus is part of the formula. y1 is 4 over 10 minus negative 2. So change my double negatives. That's going to give me negative 6 over 12, and that's going to reduce down to negative 1 half. Negative 5 minus 5 more, and negative 8 minus negative 4. So that's negative 10. Negative 8 plus 4 is negative 4. Two negatives make a positive, and that reduces down to 5 over 2. Okay, 4 minus 0 and negative 2 minus 10 gives me 4 over negative 12, which reduces to negative 1 third. Okay, it doesn't matter if the negative is on the top, on the bottom, or right in the middle. I will always put my negative with the top, okay, but it does not matter. It's the same as long as there's only one of them. 
zoom in a little bit here. Okay. All right, number five. Nine minus nine, that's your y's, and three minus five gives me zero over negative two. Zero divided by anything is zero slope. Number six, five minus eight, negative seven minus negative seven. So that's going to give me negative three over zero. Okay, if the zero is on the bottom, remember if you type that in your calculator, it says, no, you cannot do that. That is undefined or no slope. Either one. Okay, number seven. So three minus nine and two minus negative one. So that's going to give me negative six over three, which is going to be negative two over one. And again, I know that negative two and negative two over one are the same, but I will always make it a fraction when I'm dealing with my slope. It's very important when we start graphing, um, and I'll explain that once we get there this week. All right, negative two minus 13 over six minus negative four. And that's negative 3 over 2. Y'all, by now, these should just kind of come second nature because we've done so many of them. Literally just plug it into the formula and working it out from there. Okay? All right, two more, and then the last section, which is the more difficult section. I'll make sure I got, get to all of those so you have examples for your homework. All right, so we're going to do negative 2 minus negative 9 over 3 minus 5. So that's going to give me 7 over negative 2, and that could be negative 7 over 2. Remember, I like to have my negative on top, but it does not matter. 8 minus 6 and 4 minus 4 is undefined. Okay. All right. Now, counting slope on the graph, pretty easy. Slope formula we've done before, pretty easy. So now we're going to get to the hardest part. And I need you to stick with me here because this can get very confusing um, if we don't do it correctly. Okay. All right. We're using the same slope formula. So remember, our slope formula, I'm going to write it over here, is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I'm using that formula for this problem. The difference is this is my x1, y1, and this will be x2, y2. And they gave me my slope. It says if the slope, blah, 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 is. So if I take out of the line passing to the, if the slope is. So this is my M. So I'm going to set it up using M on the left. Y2 is Y minus Y1 is 6 over X2 is 5 minus X1 is negative 5. Okay, so notice here, before we were looking for M, we didn't have the slope. Now we have the slope. We're trying to work backwards. That's why it says going backwards to find what that other y value is. Okay, so if I reduce this down, 5 plus 5 gives me 10. And now the way I'm going to solve this is I'm going to do something called cross multiplication. And I'm going to put my letter first because I like my variable to be on the left. So I'm going to go 5 first, 5 times y minus 6 is going to equal negative 4 times 10. Once you get to here, now it should turn into a simple equation that we should be able to do. So I'm going to distribute 5 times y is 5y 
five times negative six is minus 30 and negative four. So this is a two-stepper. So y equals negative two. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna be doing on these last eight problems. Same exact setup on all of them, okay? So put your m first. So my m here is two. I'm gonna make that a fraction. My y1 val or y2 value is six minus negative two, and then x minus negative three. So change your double negatives. All right, the next step is going to be to simplify. 6 plus 2 is 8. The next step is to cross multiply. So again, I'm going to do the variable first. So that took me up here. I didn't want to run out of room, okay? And now we're going to solve. So we're going to subtract 6. And x equals 1. Same process. I got an m here, so 3 over 2. My y1, y2 and y1, x2 and x1. Negative 7 plus 4 gives me negative 3. Let's cross multiply. So 3 times x minus 0 equals 2 times negative 3. We'll write that up here when I distribute. So that's 3x. I don't need 3 times 0 is 0. I don't need to write that. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. I'm going to divide by 3, and x is going to equal negative 2. And I think we only got through either 15 or 6. 15 in one class or two classes, and then 15 and 16 in a couple. I don't remember. Okay, but I am going to do all six of these in your notes for the video, okay? Just might not talk through the whole thing, because by now we should know what we're setting up. So y here is 5. So once I solve completely for that, you're going to get that x equals 8. All right, sorry, y'all had a slight 
interruptions what happens when I do work at school you know with my videos so we'll make it all right so four more again just gonna work through it real quick um, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you see if that'll oh, I say I am on these okay so I'm gonna go ahead and tell you number 17 your answer should be 9 number 18 your answer should be 16 number 19 your answer should be 8 and number 20 your answer should be negative 6 so if you want to try to work those out on your own we did not do those in class um, and see if you if you've got what you're doing that would be great um, because like I said I'm just gonna kind of fly through this pretty quickly not really explaining everything because we're just plugging in simplifying we're going to cross multiply so this time all right sorry I got ahead of myself there realized I didn't do that for y'all okay so we're going to okay so that gives me a negative 7 minus y here and a negative 16 so when I move the 7 I'm going to add it so that gives me negative y equals negative 9 but because it is negative I have to divide by that negative 1 so that's where the positive 9 comes in so don't forget that if that variable is negative it is not all by itself yet so you do have to divide by that okay so we're going to do the same thing over here if it happens this one's not going to happen because I've got a negative 1 that's going to go to that negative x, which is going to make it a little bit easier when I distribute. That's a negative 11 plus x equals 5. So when I add my 11, that's where I got the 16 that I told you was the answer. Okay. You can stop this video. If you want to work on these on your own and then come back to me working it out, whatever is easier for you. Okay, so we're going to move the 20 by subtracting. So that gives me negative 4y equals negative 32. And when I divide by the negative 4, that's where I got the 8 from. All right, so the last one over here, 1 third would equal y minus y over x minus x. Simplify that 2 minus, negative 2 minus y over 12. And then cross multiply. we're going to add our 6 so negative 3y equals 18 and then divide by our negative 3 and we got negative 6 okay so again several problems there worked out in case you needed them go back and re do them on your own try it again see what you need